Donald Trump has put us in a horrible situation. We do have enormous income inequality. The American people understand that Trump is a phony, that Trump is a pathological liar and a racist. Well, one of the worst things about President Trump that he's done to this country is he's torn apart the moral fabric of who we are. We talked about, you asked before, what is the greatest national security threat to the United States? It's Donald Trump. Ten candidates took to the stage last night for a spirited Democratic debate, wasting no time taking shots at President Trump and at the front runner in the group, Joe Biden. It was a stark contrast to the first round of the primary debates. Let's bring in former White House press secretary and Fox News contributor Ari Fleischer. Ari, thank you very much for being with us today. Well, as we, were, as we were just saying, what a difference from Wednesday. Uh, not many mentions of President Trump Wednesday. Yesterday, 52 times they called him out, attacking him, principally uh, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders, on tax cuts on immigration. Does an anti-Trump anti platform like that, does that bode well for the Democrats in 2020? Uh, and what does this tell us about their strategies? Yes, it does bode well. Look, it's, it's, it's mandatory. When you're running to change the party in the White House, you run against the person in the White House. Republicans did that in 2016. The many statements that were anti-Donald Trump, which implied anti-Hillary Clinton. And now it's the Democrats' turn. But here's the thing. You don't differentiate yourself as a candidate by going after Donald Trump. It's too obvious. You differentiate yourself by doing what Kamala Harris did by going after the frontrunner, Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it's mandatory to go after the opposition, Trump, but that's not how you win. You'll win by differentiating yourself from the front-running Democrat. Yeah, and many people saying that Kamala Harris was the standout uh, candidate last night. Also, one of the big headlines is this shift to the socialist wing of the party. We've got a soundbite here from President Trump, who was clearly watching. Uh, have a listen. I've been watching the debates a little bit in between meetings, and... Uh, I wasn't impressed, but when you look at the socialism and you look at what it can do, that's what you're talking about there. And, uh, that's become like the Socialist Party. In fact, I heard there's a rumor the Democrats are going to change the name of the party from the Democrat Party to the Socialist Party. So what does this shift to the left really mean? Um, the New York Post had a front cover with everyone's hands raised when they voted, when they said they would support uh, health care, free health care for Im immigrants. Um, what does this mean? Is that also going to be a success for them? Democrats have planted a lot of time bombs that are going to go off as soon as their primary is done. And believe me, Donald Trump knows how to set those off. They have a huge problem coming up. Not, it's not just socialism. They have become captive to ethnic politics, the politics of racial identity. This is why they're saying that basically you Republicans are racist if you don't allow people to come over the border in any number, any way, that we should decriminalize those who come over the border, that if you come over the border illegally, you should be qualified for government-sponsored uh, health insurance. Think about what they're saying to tens of millions of working, middle-income, lower-income Americans of all ethnicities. You people, you American taxpayers, now need to pay, even though you're struggling with your health insurance, you need to pay for the health insurance of those who came here illegally this morning. This is a loser in the general election by astounding numbers. But they do it because of the power of ethnic politics inside a Democratic primary. So do you think that this shift to the left signals the beginning of the end for Joe Biden's centrist agenda? It's a terrible time bomb for the Democrats in a general election. In a primary, it's unseen. I, I think there's enough Democrats who in a primary believe in this type of racial redistribution, ethnic redistribution, which is really what, we're, what you're seeing the Democrats espouse. Even Biden is changing his tune now to go along with it. Biden's got other problems. I saw an adjective in one of the papers this morning saying his appearance, he looks soggy. Mm -hmm. And that's a really interesting word to use for Joe Biden. There's just something about Biden that he's off his mark a little bit. And he, he did not have a good night. The insurgent, Kamala Harris, had the good night. I think other good nights are going to be had by other insurgents. There's a lot of fluidity to this Democrat primary, and I'm not fooled by Biden's lead in the polls. It's paper thin. So what, what do you think of Bernie Sanders' uh, role as the leader uh, of the socialist agenda? Has he just now been swamped by all the others on the left? Fascinating to see, isn't it? Because all the mainstream Democrats are now running on socialist positions. When it comes to free college, free meals, free life, free health care, free you name it, it's all Bernie. <laughs> and he is forcing the Democrats so far to the left that I think they are, they are going to have a real problem 
against Donald Trump in November of 2020. I, I think these debates are hurting the Democrats because they have to win a primary that pushes them to the left in order to take on Trump. But in order to take on Trump, you cannot be far left. Interesting. And this is the problem that Bernie has set off inside the Democratic Party by all the Bernie wannabes. Yeah. If we can switch to the G20 now, we saw President Trump meeting with President Putin earlier, and he was asked by reporters whether or not he would raise the issue of Russian meddling. And here's what he said straight after that. Have a look. So quite a few people on the left saying that that was the president uh, making light of the situation of the uh, election meddling. What's your view? I think it was a mistake by the president. I, I wish the president would have just privately said to Putin, and maybe he did, that this is serious. Look, all Americans should be alarmed if any foreign nation has got a government entity that is messing around in our elections. We should take that seriously, and we do need to tell that nation you need to stop it. Uh, and, and take it seriously. Now, the president has done an awful lot that is anti-Russia in policy and in deed. So he gets credit there. But this is, this is an important matter of the integrity of our elections, and I take it seriously. Um, mm -hmm. I will also add, beyond telling the nation to stop it, in an era of social media and the technology is as simple that I could log on today and say something about the yeah. Canadian elections or the Russian elections. Am I an American interfering? How do you stop people from just going on yeah. social media? It's not as easy as people think, but I wish the president took it more seriously. Yeah. Well, and perhaps there will be sterner w words from the president behind closed doors. He certainly told journalists before yeah. leaving for the G20 uh, that it was no one's business what they discussed in private. Ari Fleischer, who we should note is coaching members of the RNC on their media appearances. We thank you for joining us.